Hello, friends and members of Davidson College Presbyterian Church. Welcome to another weekly worship offering for you. It is the week of May 24th. It is Memorial Day weekend. We pray that this would be a time of rest and renewal for you as all of us ease back into reopening in North Carolina. We are still taking it slow and cautiously here at Davidson College Presbyterian Church. We'll update you on changes. In the meantime, may this morning be a blessing to you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to worship today. Let's begin with Come Christians Join to Sing.
please join me in our call to worship. Resurrection hope still floats through the air and calls us to worship. We gather across space and time to sing our praise to God. Resurrection life courses through the veins of the body of Christ and calls us to something new. We join our voices as one to shout from the valleys and the tops of the mountains that our Lord reigns. Resurrection promise pulls us from the uncertainty of the day and reminds us of God's steadfast love. We journey to the ends of the earth to witness to God's saving love and grace. Let us worship God. Spirit. 
we have made promises to be Christ's faithful disciples and to show his love to our life's end. Although we fail to fulfill those baptismal vows, God's faithful love endures forever. Confident of God's grace, let us confess our sin and the sin of this world. Holy God, even as we join our voices to sing your praise, we have felt isolated and alone. We confess that we have at times held on to fear when you called us to faith. We confess that we have at times contributed to others' loneliness with words we have spoken or withheld. We confess that at times we have chosen to stay in the valley of despair rather than make our way up to the top of Alleluia Hill. Forgive us for settling for a life apart. Forgive us for hindering your life-giving spirit. Open our hearts anew to your transforming power that sets us and your world free. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hear the good news. God hears our prayers and cares for us all. God's love is steadfast. God's grace is sufficient. Each new day is an opportunity for a beginning. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning. Thank you for joining us for worship at Davidson College Presbyterian Church. Grace and peace to you, whether you are a member or a friend of our congregation. We're glad you are joining us here on our YouTube worship premiere for Sunday, May 24th. It's Memorial Day weekend, and I feel like I'm getting closer to being inside our worship spaces with you. But as you know, we're not there yet. It's phase two of the governor's reopening. We're not yet doing in-person worship or in-person activities at Davidson College Presbyterian Church. If you want to know more about our reopening plans, there's a letter from me that's posted at our website. We continue to give updates by email. Most important things to know, again, our in-person worship and in-person activities for groups aren't going to be happening for the foreseeable future. It's part of the way we're loving our neighbors as ourselves. We're glad you're here. We want to know that you're here. In the chat section, in the comment sections of your YouTube video, there is a friendship pad. It's a way to tell us who you are and whether or not you want contact and whether or not we can be praying for you. We hope that you'll avail yourselves of that friendship pad. We also hope that you download the bulletin or go to our website, subscribe to our weekly newsletter so that you can keep up with what is still a busy and faithful life together. Speaking of a busy and faithful life together, I have a couple of announcements for you. Many of us are undergoing life changes during the pandemic, and one of those here at our congregation is Jane Kane, who is retiring after 41 years of ministry with us and for us. Next Sunday is her final Sunday. She'll be offering some music at 945 and at the live stream at 11 o'clock. My prayer is no matter which service you enjoy next Sunday, that you would avail yourself of one of the many opportunities provided by our personnel committee when it comes to expressing your thanks to Jane Kane for all of her years of ministry on our behalf. And thank you to everyone who's made a donation to the Feed North Carolina Soup Kitchen and Food Pantry in Mooresville. We're still taking donations and be on the lookout for more opportunities to feed and house and clothe our neighbors here in the Charlotte area. Here, come take a look at this. Not bad, not bad, not bad. We'll take yours too. And if you're looking for some daily devotionals, the pastors have something at our YouTube channel, Mondays through Thursdays. Three to five minutes, not long, a little scripture, a little prayer, often a resource from someone we really appreciate reading or seeing. Before we turn to our time with our children and our scripture readings, we have a minute for mission from Terry Bentley about next week's Pentecost offering and the blessing of your gifts for the benefit of others through that offering. Hi, I'm Terry Bentley. I'm coming to you from the Global Mission Committee, and I want to share with you briefly about the Pentecost offering. Who was the first person to teach you about Jesus? 
He was the first person to show you how to honor God in your life. Who helped you open doors to new understandings of God and faith? When did these things happen? For many of us, they happened during our childhood. They happened at home. They happened at Sunday school, at church, at youth group, at camp, or even perhaps on a mission trip. You probably don't need a study to tell you that a foundation of faith established during childhood through young adulthood helps ensure a lifelong faith and service. But yet studies do show this to be true. Psalm 71 testifies to this same truth. Verse 17 says, O oh God, from my youth you have taught me, and I still pro proclaim your wondrous deeds. The pattern and lessons established during these formative years continue to bear fruit throughout a person's life. The Pentecost offering is used to support ministries in our denomination to youth and young adults, as well as children that are at risk. The church is allowed to designate a local offering and the Global Mission Committee has designated Caterpillar Ministries in Huntersville as the recipient. The organization serves children and families in our community. They provide faith formation, opportunities, encouragement and support, as well as financial assistance to families in need. Please give generously to the Pentecost offering today or next Sunday. You can write Pentecost offering on the check that you mail to the church or type Pentecost offering in the memo line when giving online. You may also text YOUNG, Y-O-U-N-G, to 20222 to give $10. Help us support and nurture the next genera generation in the Pentecost offering. Thank you. Hey, good morning. So glad to be with all of you today. Have you ever had to wait for anything? Well, I'm out here in front of my house uh, waiting. My, uh, two of my children have gone out on an errand and I'm waiting for them to get back. They've been gone longer than I would like. And so I'm wondering when they're gonna be back. And uh, so I'm waiting. You know, waiting is, is hard sometimes. Sometimes it's exciting, like when we're waiting for a birthday to come, but sometimes it's hard when we're waiting for some news or when we're waiting for a parent to come pick us up or we're waiting for someone to come home. Lots of times we can spend that time doing something creative. Lots of times we just worry and fiddle our thumbs and fret. Sometimes it's good for us to pray and that's what we find in our story today that we read about in our gospel, actually from the book of Acts, where Jesus tells his disciples to go and to pray and to wait and expect something exciting. And that's the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we're gonna talk more about that next week at Pentecost. So I hope that you will spend your time when you're waiting, praying, and remember that God is with you in the times of waiting. Hey, Dad. Hey. Glad you're home. It's good to be home. So sometimes our waiting results in good news. But sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes the news is sad. But that doesn't mean that God isn't still with us, comforting and strengthening us. So I hope that as followers of Jesus, you remember that you are never alone and that in times of waiting, we can find comfort and strength no matter what the situation. Will you pray with me? Dear God, we thank you for the invitation to pray and to wait upon you. We remember the good news that you are always at work in our lives, bringing about good even in hard times. 
So as we are waiting in these days, give us your patience, give us your peace, and remind us most especially of your deep and abiding love that is always with us and will never let us go. We offer these prayers in your holy name. Amen. Have a great rest of the day. Bye. Good morning, Davidson College Presbyterian Church. My name is Jan Edmiston, and I bring greetings from the offices of the Presbytery of Charlotte, where I serve as your general presbyter. From the whole Presbytery staff, we thank you for being the church in Davidson and beyond. And we thank God for your ministry, especially in these days. Let us listen for God's word to us from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 12 through 14, and chapter 5, verses 6 through 11. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety upon him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is a song called Glory. Your voice like thunder, your voice is wonder. Turns the mighty seas, splits the mighty trees. The mountains crumble, your people humbled, all struck by your your fame and your glory, your glory. All your people sing, all your people sing of your glory, your glory. Changes everything, changes everything. Your voice lightning, your voice is frightening, echoes in the air, strips the forest bare, your voice a whisper to waiting listeners, telling us to go, letting others know.
Our second reading this morning comes from the book known as the Acts of the Apostles, sometimes called the Acts of the Holy Spirit, which is also known as Volume 2 of Luke Acts. It's thought that the writer of the Gospel according to Luke was also the writer of Acts. They begin in exactly the same way, addressing the letter or the book to someone named Theophilus. Could be a specific individual, but it's also thought to be uh, the friend of God, any general person who's known as friend of God, which is what Theophilus means. I invite you to hear these words from Acts 1, verses 1 through 14. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When He had said this, as they were watching, He was lifted up, and a cloud took Him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to spend a few minutes today speaking with you about waiting during uncertain times. Here we are at the end of the Easter tide, uh, week seven of Easter, to be specific. And I'm bringing you a message that's more commonly heard during the season of Advent waiting. I think it's A similar time, honestly, as we wait for things to change and open up during this season of pandemic. In this morning's text from Acts, we read that Jesus told the disciples to wait. Jesus ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. You will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And we know about waiting. We... In these days, I've been waiting for things like new shipments of toilet paper, waiting for Amazon packages to arrive, waiting for stimulus checks, waiting to get back to work, waiting for the barber shop to open, waiting to be able to get together with our friends again, waiting for the next season of Outer Banks to come out, waiting to be back together in church. And then there are the normal things that we wait around for on a regular basis throughout life, waiting for special occasions like birthdays and anniversaries and graduations, waiting for an apology from someone, waiting for a word from the doctor, or waiting for an answer to prayer. We know about waiting, but we don't always do it all that well. Especially when we're waiting for God to move, we may grow impatient 
And like the runner that's on the starting line, we might give a false start, taking matters into our own hands, getting ahead of God and getting lost in the tangled mess that is sometimes life. One of my favorite passages from the Bible is from the prophet Isaiah who proclaimed that those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. This kind of waiting is based on trust and faith and peace. Waiting upon the Lord assures us that when God is ready for us to move, God will make that abundantly clear. So what was on the disciples' minds as they stood there on that hillside called the Mount of Olives and watched Jesus ascend up into heaven? God only knows what they were thinking. But those two men dressed in white, those messengers from God, weren't about to leave them there with their jaws on the ground They startled them back to that present moment with the good news that Jesus would come back in the very same way that he had left them. So the disciples went back to Jerusalem with that promise and the good news that the Holy Spirit would be given to them as a gift any day. They gathered and they prayed with the holy expectancy that God was going to give them all that they needed to answer the calling that they'd been given. They knew not to get out ahead of God because they were going to need God's presence, God's strength, and God's love for every step of that journey along the way as they witnessed to the world, beginning in Jerusalem, about God's love and grace in Jesus Christ. Fast forward a couple of generations and you find the church living into that calling in the Roman world at odds with the culture in which they were living, but trying to be faithful witnesses to Jesus, for Jesus. The writer of 1 Peter encouraged them to stand firm even in the midst of persecution, not to lose faith or hope, but to expect that hard times would surely come because of their faith. That even in moments like that, they could find reasons to rejoice as they remembered the persecution that their Lord Jesus had endured. You see, suffering for Christ's sake, according to the text, brings blessing because of the strength of the Spirit of God that wells up within us. And this doesn't glorify suffering in any way, but yet reminds us that we do not suffer alone. We can cast our anxiety upon God who cares for us and promises to restore us and to strengthen us. This was the message to the church in Asia Minor, and it's the message to the church today, nearly 2,000 years later. Author Janet Lee captures some of what the disciples and the early church might have been wrestling with as they struggled in those in-between times of waiting and uncertainty. Listen to her words. Are you here or there, Jesus? I had heard that you were here, challenging my narrow-mindedness, bleeding and in pain, embracing vulnerability. They told me you'd gone, but where to? Obscured by clouds, shining with glory, or encompassing the cosmos? Are you here or there, Jesus? Sun rises and I look for you. From east to west I search. The day ends and I need you still. In light and dark alike, are you here or there, Jesus? I'm trying to be faithful. Perhaps I've boxed you in to here and now and confined you to one body. I'm afraid you'll go away. And... If you're there, then are you still here, Jesus? Your glory is hard to understand with its otherworldly mystery and cosmic faraway feel. Yet you offer me this glory too, as a sign of down-to-earth holiness. Could you be here and there, Jesus? I know you embrace my humanity, but... Perhaps a bit of your mountaintop glory 
would make me shine with joy. Perhaps you can be here and there, Jesus. So here we are on this seventh Sunday of Easter, all these years later, and the hallelujahs seem terribly faint compared to what they must have been like on that resurrection morning. Like ripples on the water following a big splash, the waves of water that are pushed out get smaller and smaller as they move away from the middle. But they do move out and they do make a difference. Just as the disciples were sent out from Jerusalem and then to Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth, and the people of God, you and me, starting right from where we are here and now, we make our own great splash and gradually touch the whole world with the good news of God's love and grace. Those waves of love are meant to wash over all of creation with the transformative news of resurrection life, of faith in the midst of fear, of hope in the midst of despair. Pastor Peter on Easter Sunday spoke about the broken hallelujahs that sometimes emerge from the church. It's true we are a broken people, but according to the New Testament book of 1 Peter, we are also a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a chosen race, God's own people. Our hallelujahs may be broken at times, and they may take a long time to emerge from wherever they have been buried deep down inside of us sometimes. They emerge and they get to those places where they most need to go by the power of God. God empowers us to sing our song even when we can't come together and sing together in public. God empowers us to gather up our neighbors to experience the wonder of ascension as we raise people's spirits with encouragement and hope, even if we have to do it from six feet apart. God empowers us to lift up the physically, emotionally, and spiritually beaten down, even if we have to do so while wearing masks and latex gloves. But before we do any of that, God empowers us to pray, to gather around tables with our families, over computer screens and TVs with our church community, and in prayer closets all by ourselves. The disciples, along with certain women and the family of Jesus, constantly devoted themselves to prayer, the text tells us. Should we do any less as we wait for some fresh direction and empowerment from God? Sometimes it's clear that we know what to do and we should do it with energy, imagination, intelligence, and love. Sometimes the direction isn't so clear and it seems like God is saying to us, wait. Maybe we're in one of those times right now as we're thinking about our neighbors and wanting to go slowly in our phased approach to reopening our communities and our economies. I love what the Ghanaian president, Nana Akufo Addo, said at the beginning of this pandemic. We know how to bring the economy back to life. What we do not know is how to bring people back to life. Better to wait and go slowly and all the while pray for guidance, wisdom, and strength to do God's will. This kind of expectant prayer is what we're invited to. Prayers that fully trust in the fulfillment of God's promises. Come Holy Spirit, show us your goodness. Take away our burdens and our fear. Strengthen us in your love. Give us your peace which passes all understanding. This is how we're called to pray in these times, friends. And we are called to pray for our siblings in Christ and our neighbors in peril so that when the way is clear, we can lift them up with an encouraging word, with a financial gift, with a roof over their head and clothing on their backs, with a new job and food on their table, and with faith, hope, and love overflowing in their hearts. 
One night, a week and a half or so ago, I decided to go up into the attic and look through some boxes. You know what you do when you have a little extra time on your hands and you've gone through all the other things you can think of doing for the evening. Well, I found this box full of old memorabilia from high school and college, and I found my uh, graduation materials from when I graduated from NC State, Go Wolfpack. There was a commencement book there that had all the names, names of everyone who had graduated, and in it, it also talked about the schedule for the day along with the commencement speaker. Now, I think that I probably at that age, as a 21-year-old white male, didn't have that much of an interest in the speaker that day. But looking back on it now, I'm 30 years later, I'm so amazed and thrilled that our commencement speaker for that day was Maya Angelou. She died in 2014, but her work as a poet, educator, author, and activist goes on. The final paragraph of her bio in my commencement program reads like this. Infused with passion and an exuberant vitality, Miss Angelou believes in social change for the betterment of those who have not shared fully in the American dream. Maya Angelou, rising out of her own difficult circumstances, brought hope and inspiration to others who were in the midst of their own struggles. One of her better known poems is titled, Still I Rise. Listen as it's read by the author. You may write me down in history with your bitter twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust, I'll rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Just because I walk as if I have oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like suns and like moons, with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cries. Does my sassiness upset you? <laughs> Don't take it so hard just because I laugh. <laughs> As if I have gold mines digging in my own backyard. You can shoot me with your words. You can cut me with your lies. You can kill me with your hatefulness. But just like life, I rise. Does my sexiness offend you? Oh, does it come as a surprise that I dance? As if I have diamonds at the meeting of my thighs. Out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past rooted in pain, I rise. A black ocean leaping and wide. Welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak miraculously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the hope and the dream of the slave. And so, naturally, There I go rising. Now I can't begin to imagine the life of Maya Angelou or of someone like Ahmad Arbery or of a refugee fleeing his or her home country or of a young person being bullied for their sexual identity or of a man or a woman or a child dying on the battlefield in the midst of war. But reading this poem, I can imagine us all being tethered to Jesus who rose from death to new life and then ascended into the very presence of God. 
Friends, no matter our pain or our circumstance, we're invited, I'm convinced, on that same journey, rising from life's uncertainty and struggle into the brilliance of God's presence. The God of all creation invites us to join in this liberating and transformative work of faith that begins in prayer and leads us out of darkness into the light. So may we too, in the midst of our praying and our waiting, rise up by the power of God's Spirit to proclaim life, freedom, hope in these uncertain times. To God be the glory. Amen. Now, I hope you'll join in singing this next song, Lord, Listen to Your Children Pray, as we practice what the text encourages us to do, and we enter into a time of prayer. Let us sing together. It's been a while since any of you have been inside of Lingle Chapel, but perhaps you've been near Lingle Chapel outside since the pandemic began. And perhaps you noticed this little gift that someone placed outside of our door, a ministry in its own right, reminding us to have faith in the midst of all that besets us. Today, we trust in this gift of faith as we remember the family of Colin Shaw who died and joined the church triumphant this past week. We pray for Ruth and all of the Shaw family. And in our prayers of the people today, there will be a call and a response. I'll offer a petition. I'll offer a period of silence. At the end of the silence, I will say, Lord, we wait with expectation to which you are invited to respond. Listen to your children praying, trusting in God's grace. Lord, we wait with expectation. Listen to your children praying. Jesus Christ, mediator and high priest, we thank you for becoming human and for experiencing the joys and sorrows of life, returning to the earth to validate our sorrow, to assuage our grief, and to raise us to the hope of new life in you. Help us to turn our thoughts toward you. Lord, we wait with expectation. Listen to your children praying. Jesus Christ, when you ascended into heaven, some may have felt left behind, needing patience and strength in their waiting. We may feel left behind, anxious for your guidance and wisdom. But the truth is that we have not been left behind. We thank you for all of those who remind us of your love by loving us, those who pour your goodness, your grace, your power, and your love into our lives. We pray our gratitude for them now. Lord, we wait with expectation. Listen to your children praying. Oh God, you who have served us in years past. We remember those who have served us. On this Memorial Day weekend, we are especially mindful of those who gave their lives so that we might live in freedom, in freedom to serve and to love our neighbors as ourselves. Today, 
We pray in remembrance of those who have been lost, praying also for their families who miss them still. Lord, we wait with expectation. Listen to your children praying. We pray, O oh God, our gratitude and blessing upon those who serve us now, not always in uniform, but some of them in garb that has to protect them and keep them safe as they keep us safe. We pray for all who serve in the medical care ministries of our country and of our world. Lord, we wait with expectation. Listen to your children praying. We pray as well today for our country, divided over our common need to protect one another and to heal, our divisions as deadly at times as the diseases that ravage us, our politics as infectious as viruses, sometimes as deadly. We pray for our country and for our world that we would be united in love of our neighbors. Lord, we wait with expectation. Listen to your children praying. Today we pray for those who grieve the loss of a future, the loss of plans upon which they had placed so many hopes, and especially those who grieve the loss of loved ones. We especially pray for Ruth Shaw and for all of Collins' family, that they may be at peace and upheld by your everlasting arms. Lord, we wait with expectation. Listen to your children praying. We pray all of this in the name of the one who came to earth and ascended into heaven so that we might know that the promise of life in you is to be with you in eternity as Christ is even now. And we pray as well the prayer that he taught to us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, friends, as we go out into the world today from this place of worship, let's go out and live like we belong to the Lord, like we belong to each other in community. Let's be filled with the Spirit as we prepare for Pentecost. Let's live like that. Sometimes I think, what will people say of me when I'm only just a memory? Don't know my name Is there evidence 
Friends, why are you standing around looking in the sky? Jesus is coming back the same way that he left. And the Spirit has come to give us life, to empower us, so that we might go out into the world and be his witnesses. So go and know that the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit is with us this day and every day. Go in peace.